My name is Sam Miller. Um, I'm 48. Um, I've lived in India now for the last eight years. My name's Anaya Shah. I'm 26 years old. I settled in India three years ago. My name is uh, Jack Linos. Uh, I'm from Netherlands. I came to India two years ago. I moved with my husband to New Delhi. Uh, my name is Gilles Chuyen. I'm French and I've been living in Delhi now for the last 15 years. My name is Peter Kronschnabel. I'm the president of BMW in India. I'm since uh, August 2006 in India and uh, I'm originally from Munich, Germany. My, uh, the image I had of India was the general, uh, the general idea, like crowded, overcrowded, uh, chaotic, full of challenges. I for sure the, the opposite from the world where I was coming from. Well, I had no knowledge about uh, everyday life, about the people, but my, my knowledge about, was about text when I came from. I mean, I came from a family who travelled around Europe, but would never have considered going anywhere further. So. It was, if anything, it would have been India, Delhi, Belly, dead country poverty. Um, but beyond that, I hadn't really thought about it. The first time that I came here when I was this young, I only can remember like poor people living on the street and dogs who, you know, weren't fed well or weren't fed enough. That's, that's sort of what I had in my memory. Basically, I'm a journalist. Uh, I worked as a South Asia correspondent for a Dutch newspaper, Telegraph Netherlands, and I was in the foreign desk in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Uh, so they sent me here. I originally came here as a sort of BBC journalist with my... We were newly married and I wanted to move here. I came here for a variety of different reasons. Uh, professionally, because it just I needed a change in my job and wanted to do work on the ground in the environment sector and uh, with a social enterprise. And personally, I've wanted to recently connect back with uh, kind of my roots and learn Hindi and experience India. I moved to India around, now it's going to be six years ago, and I actually came first to study. I did my MA in sociology from here. And then I just happened to stay back. I'm from uh, Lamjes College. I've done economic here. And while I was doing my study. Uh, I saw like uh, in the newspaper these days also, uh, India is growing up. So I thought I have seen the opportunity, the chance will as a, in a business. We wanted to uh, do something different. Um, we wanted to, to move to a country which, uh, um, which, one of the, which is one of the developing countries, you know, like uh, China, Brazil, India, and um, in the end, we chose for, for India. So I got a job in the cultural section of the French Embassy uh, in uh, Tourang Zebrut here for two years. And after that, I stayed on because I decided to do a PhD about India. So I got a scholarship for that. India for me was an attractive place because it's where I was born and also somewhere that I'd heard a lot about as a growing market. My mother thought I'd completely lost the plot. Um, I mean, India is somewhere she'd never dream of coming to even now. Um, but I think more so as well because I was coming out to, to run a little camp in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we, were, we were overjoyed because we've been waiting for this for 15 or 20 years. There are very few jobs in uh, India. And even this one, we were told that we couldn't possibly come. They had someone else for the job. So I cried and cried for about six weeks until the miracle happened and he was given the job. For centuries, India has been attracting visitors from all over the world. People have come here to see its natural beauty, its rich cultural heritage, or sample its varied cuisine. India has invited and warmly welcomed visitors, whether they come for business, leisure, or study. We have a long tradition of people coming into our country 
uh, and uh, and uh, and making India their home, and uh, they have those people have been accepted and. Uh, they have become part of our, of our history, part of our culture, part of our civilization, so to speak. And so that there is a degree of, uh, of receptivity to other people's cultures. From the 16th century uh, up until the beginning of the colonial period, India was the richest place in the world. It had two harvests, all the diamonds in the world, much of the gold, uh, the spice trade, the um, textiles. Uh, and uh, the Tudors came here not as part of some sort of aid project, but because this is where the cash was. Um, India had a brief period of poverty at the end of the colonial period and, and the beginning of the post-colonial period. Now is reverting to its natural state at the center of world trade. It's almost become trendy to come here. Uh, I think in the old days, coming to India was like a huge decision, and why would you go there? And it's a bit unusual. Now everyone knows someone who knows someone who's gone to India. There are endless people, friends of friends of friends, who get in touch and say, so-and-so told me to get in touch with you. We're planning to come out, wanting to find out more about it. It's build up, built up a kind of steam of its own coming to live here. But in fact, people come from a huge range of reasons. It could be because they're marry, married to an Indian. It could be for business reasons. And obviously, there are so many more business people coming here. Others will come here for reasons, you know, they've studied, they want to study yoga, or they want to study Sanskrit, or they're interested in Hinduism. Uh, they're interested in music and in dance. Uh, a whole range of sort of cultural traditions which still uh, command an incredible amount of interest in the West. Today, it is India's booming economy which has made it an attractive destination for people from all over the world. Along with the growing economy, the promise of a comfortable lifestyle and its increasing reputation as a global player have made India the work destination of choice among corporate expats. For the first time, Foreign employees seem to be willing to physically relocate to India in search of work. India is one of the fastest growing economies globally. And uh, obviously, if you look down the line, the next 10, 15 years, India will become one of the most important economies in the world. As a multinational, if you're not present in India, you will miss the boat. You have to be here right now. So a lot of, there's a lot of focus on India. India is an attractive uh, now site for uh, investments of, of, of all sorts uh, and uh, it's much more obviously inexpensive to run a business establishment, to run a trade establishment and to run now of course educational centers of all kinds. Uh, secondly, I think uh, the civic communities have improved dramatically uh, so that housing is, is of high quality and roads are a little better and uh, living conditions are generally agreeable compared to what they were a decade ago. And finally, I think the most, probably one of the most important uh, attractions is the fact that uh, there is a lot more to do, so to speak. Similarly, some of the many Indians who have been working or studying abroad are coming home, often after a long absence. Years ago, they left India in search of better jobs or education, more money and a better lifestyle. But these are the same reasons that are drawing them back. My uh, parents left India when I was about three years old because for them the work uh, environment was better, job prospects were much safer there in the UK than they were in India at the time. We've actually done the reverse. We've come here with a three-year-old uh, because the jobs prospects are better here in India than they were in London. Uh, the medical facilities are much better here. Schooling is of much higher quality, in my opinion. Personally, um, wanted to delve into like the, the psyche and the philosophy and the spirituality in this country. Um, and then there's the side of it where you start get you, as the older you get, you get closer to your parents and grandparents, so I wanted to learn the language and get back and get in touch, so it made sense. 
From working in the development sector to heading multinational companies, expats in India are finding jobs in varied fields. They have also found unusual ways of tapping niche markets here, entering sectors like real estate, retail and hospitality, as well as introducing such innovative services as concept cafes and restaurants and cycle tours. We have bicycles, we have guides, and then we ask people to come with us and we show them all Delhi. It's a three hour tour and we show them the main places like monuments and the people, the places everybody knows. But uh, mainly we also uh, try to show them uh, the small hidden places, you know, the, 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 the real nice small alleys, the places where people usually don't come uh, because they don't know where, how to get there or they're a little bit scared. Just because I love the country, I love travelling in this country, you meet incredible people, you see amazing sights. It, I find it fascinating and I just want to share that with people. You know, yes, what I do fundamentally is sell holidays, but I don't look at the bottom line. What I want to do is create an experience so that everybody who comes here goes back feeling like I do about the country. <laughs> और पूरी तरह से छोड़ दे Studios in Delhi, in uh, Saket, and in uh, Southern Delhi. So I teach uh, modern as well as like fusion when I work with professional dancers. I do shows with my own dance company called Instep. I do shows for corporate events. I teach uh, in other institutions. I'm a guest faculty at the National School of Drama. <laughs> I'm a foodie, you can say so. So I thought like let's let's try to do something in hospitality. And I found out that there were less bakeries and, and, and good place where you can have a good sandwich or a bread. And that's why I decided to uh, do something with that. And in the end it became a bagels cafe. In India, still Korean food is very, not a popular thing, it's true. But what I found in, the, in India also, the customer has a right and they are already there, many people came uh, from abroad or they already went abroad. So they know the uh, real taste. So I should focus on the more authentic, more Korean tea. Then uh, we'll grab the customer. Settling down in a new place is always a challenge, but expats in India's cosmopolitan metros find the cities hospitable and easy to settle down in. You see so many more um international brands coming up and international cuisines coming uh, into Delhi and that's a good thing. I really like it. This country has changed in the three years that I've certainly been here as well. Um, just if you take small aspects like shopping, in 2007 I think there were a handful of malls in the suburbs of the, of the city where you'd have to go out, trek out for one hour just to get there and you'd probably come across five or six big brands, international brands. Now the malls are all over the place. You can get everything from high-end luxury to day-to-day -day brands. So it changes. This city changes um, on a very regular basis. And I think every year that I've been here, it's becoming less and less of a hardship and more and more of a familiar place. Uh, there's now malls rather than just um, uh, shops and kind of place and car market. Um, but the kind of things that I love about this country, the, um, the culture, the calligraphy, the dance, the mysticism, the history, the, uh, all the things that attract me are still, still there. It isn't, it isn't as if the old has been replaced by the new, it's just that a new layer has come, like a, a concentric circles on a tree, it's more like that. One of the reasons to, to, uh, for, my, for my wife to give labor here is because the hospitals are, uh, are very good. Um, there are a few private hospitals in, uh, in, in Delhi and um, I, I found that the service was really good. It's uh, very professional and 
So uh, actually, I feel that it's it's better than in uh, in Holland. When we knew we were having a baby, we thought about going back to the UK, um, and then we realized that the healthcare here is much better. It's more patient orientated. Facilities are better. The hospital is much better than the one where we had our our first child as well. So for us, it was never really a decision to to go back to the UK. I don't feel unsafe here, no. That's, uh, that's really a thing that is actually very positive, uh, living here. I, I, I didn't expect that, that I would feel so safe here. Actually more safe than I felt in Amsterdam sometimes. Physically I feel safer than I've ever felt in any other country. Um, I've heard Bombay and other places are incredibly safe. I think, I've thought about that once in a while because you're in DC, it's two o'clock in the morning, um, and you do look over your shoulder and you don't go to certain parts of the town. Um, here, I, I, I feel completely safe. I'll take an auto any time of day. Um, and I think it's a lot of it's due to the, even though there is violence and there is kind of urbanization, the values stick with people. And so crime doesn't seem to be as prevalent here. I just think it's wonderful to be here now where instead of a kind of sealed off environment, India is waking up and again taking full advantage of all of their resources, especially their people resources, and moving ahead instead of, you know, they're very active with uh, business and commerce and certainly in the computer field. So I'm finding it to be a great time to be here because no one's sitting there saying I'm in a poor country. They're saying I'm in a country that's going somewhere. In, in India, you've got the feeling that you're really living. You know, there, there are very good days uh, sometimes, and there are sometimes really bad days. But uh, it makes it very interesting. So, and and I, I really like the, the, the business vibe that is, that is going on here. It's much more than, than in, in Holland, for instance. Most Western people come here and they expect India to run like the West, and so they were like, well, I have to have it done in three weeks, and if it's not, they get very stressed. But I was like, three weeks, let's say six. It was done in five, at the help of a great chartered accountant who works with quite a few expats here and knows the system. So I left everything pretty much in his hands, turned up when I needed to turn up, um, and it was done. So I came in kind of with a, a Western, you know, mentality of just, you know, you set deadlines, you do things, you tell someone to do it, you expect it to be done. Uh, and here it doesn't necessarily work that way. There are two things. I mean, first of all, when you're a good leader, you have to actually compete with somebody. I strongly... At the end of the day, I must say, uh, we are all have a good team. We have, we have formed in the company a great team of expatriates and locals. And uh, it's not about where you come from or who you are. It's more about I need your support in order to achieve the goal and we all need to work at a certain level in order to, to achieve our company's goal. Uh, Indian life is it's full, it's a very colorful life, full of uh, challenges, opportunities and it's, it's, never, it's never boring. Um, it, I mean it's colorful in, in like color, like col colors, if you look around you, it's, you see all colors of, of the rainbow but it's it's colorful of, of the cultures live here, colorful of, of different mindsets, colorful of name it, and it's, it's here. I mean, everything you're looking for in life, you can find in India. Well, it's a challenging place where to stay, most definitely. I think that's what's the beauty of it. It's a chaotic place and a noisy one, but I think that's also what keeps you company throughout, you know, your day and whatever, you never feel alone. Where, like where I'm from, it's like silence all over. The fact that there's so much around, that you're, not, you're never alone or isolated here, that there will always be someone who knocks on your door, whether it's neighbors who are popping in to see how you are. That aspect, I think, is not something you get in the UK now. There's certain moments you have in India where that remind you that you're in India as opposed to just outside of your comfort zone and outside of home. Um, so I had, a, I had an experience back in October where I lost my bag with my money, 
my passport, my laptop, my everything, my entire life in a bag in an auto. And a week later, the auto driver called me up and returned it to me with every single penny accounted for. And that was an experience that just that dramatically changed the way I, I understand India because it's what I've always heard growing up. The Indian experience is also transforming for many expatriates who have fallen in love with India's people, its dance, music and films. Most expats want to be part of India's vibrant culture and are eager to adopt some of its customs and traditions. It's a fun aspect of the Indian culture that we can probably take back because in Australia everything Indian is in fashion um, and Bollywood dancing classes were on offer even before I came to India but I thought no no I'll do it I'll learn it from the real experts. <laughs> <laughs> When we moved into our house, we also did a puja and an opening, and I have also Ganesh at the entrance, and I do believe in these kind of things. Actually, I don't know if I really believe in it, but I don't want to uh, push luck. So I also did, of course, a puja here when my shop opened, and uh, all things when my son was born, and you know, yeah, yeah. I wear my little black band here to protect against evil, and I try, if possible, but I'm not very disciplined to go. I was he, My pundit told me I should go to a temple on a Thursday and do a little puja, so I try and do that. While some of these expats plan to go back to their own countries, many are here to stay. Uh, we want our children to grow up here. They are born here. Both of them, I have two children, one son, he's two, and one daughter, she's four. Uh, we got married here in Goa. Um, we want to have more children, and we also want it to happen here. Uh, so no, we have a st but my, my wife, she has her own business, I have my own business, and it's just in, a, in, a, in, a, in the first phase, so I want to make it big. I have my own business, I want to make this uh, a huge success, and as I told you, it's like a concept, another standalone restaurant, so I really want to work on that. And my husband also set up his own company in real estate last year. So he's also just starting. So we'll, yeah, we'll definitely stay here for a much longer time. For the ones who leave, it will not just be the artifacts and the handicrafts in their suitcase that they will carry back with them. It will be the things they have learned, the friends they have made, the experiences they have had that they will cherish. And this little bit of India is what they will take back with them in their hearts, wherever they go. Endless friendships, experiences, places, um, memories that are on the whole fantastic, life-changing. Um, I've spent the last 25 years either living here or spending a lot of time here and so it's become a major part of my life more than half my life um, and I, I've learned a great deal. I take back from India warmth, the colors, the generosity of the people, the helpful, the open-mindedness and last but not least and actually the most important thing for me I take lifetime friendship. Uh, I have a couple of good friends gained in India and uh, I'm sure this will be, this is a lifetime friendship. There's a hidden side of India that most people don't know. And only when, uh, when living here in India for long, long periods, uh, it's, it's a treasure you find. Uh, so moving to another country, uh, that means uh, maybe I find this treasure again, but I have my doubts. I think uh, India is a special thing which you cannot find in, in, other, in other countries around the world. And for the ones who choose to stay, India will take them in and embrace them as its own. A 
sometimes I forget that I'm a foreigner. So like, you know, maybe I'm walking around and I'm doing things and I don't realize that I'm actually not Indian. And like, you know, if I go, especially for work, maybe I go to various villages and so on. And then like, you know, maybe people start looking at me, you know, they, they, they start staring. And I'm always like, why are they looking at me? Like, whatever, like, you know, am I looking so strange? And then I realize, oh yeah, I'm not Indian. I feel a foreigner now when I'm in France, when I'm in the West. I mean, I don't really relate. I feel very much... See, this thing, you know, like it's... Um, also, because of my PhD, I read a lot about identity and being Indian. What is being Indian? You know, frankly speaking, sometimes when I feel, speak to my friends here, they feel you're more Indian than us. So the package, I mean, the white skin and the body, I mean, it's nothing. I noticed I started doing this. <laughs> really, when I got an answer, I, last month I was in the Netherlands, and my parents, they asked me something, and I said, like, maybe. And they told me, like, Jack, what are you doing? you become Indian. When people write profiles of me, they seem to think that I'm becoming Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't see it myself. I was described as the only, the only living Punjabi Scotsman the other day, <laughs> sitting back with my, all my charpoy, <laughs> my roti, and my, uh, uh, and my uh, parathas and achar and uh, uh, my goats. <laughs> yeah, I feel Indianized. I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel, I feel Indian. Yeah, I feel Indian. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain it. It just feels like home. I think everybody has some kind of internal feeling of home. And for some reason, India feels that way to me. I feel that India is my home, um, which is quite crazy. But most people who know me, my Indian friends here, think it's probably due to past lives. But when I, I've never felt settled anywhere, even in the UK. I've lived in Canada, I've lived in Austria, I've lived in France. And yet, as soon as I landed in India, just over three years ago, and I got to the jungle, it was the first time I felt settled, that I didn't want to be rushing off anywhere and visiting and traveling, and I just feel at home.